This is M.L. Kreider, author of The Interims. All literary information may be found at theinterims.com. Teaser 3, Fern Hallerby. Building 4, Group Session. The door to the mess hall was wide open. Fern Hallerby's fragile spirit belied her petite, voluptuous frame for all of 14 years of age. Shockingly beautiful, her ethereal presence was at odds with her looks. Her spirit was more at odds with itself than the others. Some larger presence from elsewhere seemed to visit through her at times unforeseen. Uncontrollable sobs heaved up and shuddered out of her chest as if automatic. Her raven purple hair was midnight against her doll-like powdery skin. When she sobbed, her chest shook her thin blouse and her eyes would slam shut, devouring the huge pools of purple-blue with each automatic heave. Top Hat had been talking through this in this day's group circle, led by Dr. King. It seemed he may know a thing or two, or just possessed an inherently thick skin. His voice sounded like caramels and cigars. Yeah, so I pushed him hard down into the subway tracks. Then I felt the rumble of the train coming. Its lights flashed wildly. I guess it startled me out of my anger, so I jumped in with the guy. The heroine made the lights look like children laughing at some carnival. I couldn't lift him from off the tracks. My Rolex was in his pocket with a $5 million Chinese stamp locked for safekeeping in its back face. I tried while the rumble grew louder near us, but I just couldn't lift the guy. His body felt like a limp sack of sand. Blood was pouring out in clumps from his shaved head. And that's, that's the last I remember. Good, good, said the doctor. The clarity of recollection is our aim here, as we must go about undoing what was done in order to now decide differently. Fern was next by Top Hat. It was her turn to speak, but in the wake of her vehement heave cries, all that was escaping her mouth were little hums at the end of each short upset of her rapid crying, a sort of dove cooing to calm down. Fern, doctor asked, can you share with us about which memory it is that is upsetting you, dear? Synchronously, a plump dove landed up high on the swivel transom window. Its wings fluttered like Fern's chest settling down. It licked the side of its pot belly. Its motions mimicked Fern's chest heaves. Her jolted loveliness defied paradox. Fern shook her head, still shaking Posob. She was sweet and terrified. She wanted to get something out. I, I, I drank my, 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 my dad's. Her eyes smashed shut again in remorse and another cry belted from her plump chest. The dove quivered and flitted away from the window. Dr. King just looked on, kind and unfazed. He filled her pause. Yes, he said. His eyes were compassionate and curious, never judgmental. Fern stuttered. Her black curls that dangled alongside her pink cheeks shook too. Remorse owned her. She tried to speak past her body's upset jolting. In hiccups, it pumped out. My, my, my dad's medicine from the bath, 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 bath. Room, she hiccuped. Ab above the sink. Fern cried long and hard now without trying to stop this time. Fern, we are here with you because each of us in this safe circle of hope shares in common the taking of our own lives in some way. At that moment, I was seeing them through the merciless water again. It was all around me. It surged back and forth above my hair like the top of water that a boat just plowed through. The water that engulfed me muted the doctor's voice. Top Hat still sat, unaffected. Fern's curls calmed down. Everyone looked dry. I was stuck in this clear cylinder of heavy water. I blinked fast to try to keep seeing them. My heartbeat was loud. It quickened and took over the sound of the water. Silence pervaded outside of this, and my heartbeat pounded in this private, suffocating womb of my very own.